What's good boy dudes and boy dudettes? Well, girl dudettes. It's not boy dudettes, it's girl dudettes, but whatever. And today we've got the fourth Naruto movie, Naruto Shippuden the movie. Just Naruto Shippuden the movie. There's no fancy title, just Shippuden the movie. It's the fourth film and the first film in the Naruto Shippuden era, directed by Hajime Kamigaki and written by Junki Tajimaji. And basically, um, Naruto and a new sort of sort of team seven with Rock Lee and Neji basically um have to protect this princess this priestess um from this guy who wants to use her blood to revive this evil demon and rule the world however while they're protecting him, her Naruto learns from her that he may die through a vision of hers because this princess priestess can basically protect the future and she sees Naruto dying in her prediction and what would happen oh I'll let you find out and let's talk about this movie and eh, how do I think about this film well eh, let's talk about positives let's talk about positives and the positive I have to admit the animation is much much more improved in this film compared to like the previous um, two films in the Naruto um, movie universe. Um, they really up their game with the animation style, I have to admit, and, and there's a lot of interesting shots, especially the early scene with Naruto fighting this kind of demon monster and him being killed, even though he's not killed, it's in a vision, so don't worry about that. And um, the animation is really nice in like in the battle sequences i have to admit and just the character motion is much better it's so much more consistent there's more emotion and expression in certain characters particularly naruto and uh pretest girl they both literally out of all the characters have the best emotion like how can i say like they have really strong expressions in this movie and the budget is obviously increased and yeah like the expressions are just so much more dare and it, you can see what they're thinking and feeling and it's just great and obviously I watched it in dub as I've watched it all of it and I actually do like certain characters and voices in dub particularly Neji and Guy Sensei I obviously it's the same actors from the TV show but I really do like Neji's voice in dubbed Stevie Steve Stanley Stanley he does the voice of Neji and he really gives this kind of like calm yet stern like and per presence and personality of Neji and I really do like Neji added in Team 7. He kind of reminds me of how Sasuke was when he was on Team 7 before. He's very similar to Sasuke. He, he, he's literally the strong guy. He's the smart guy and he doesn't take um, crap for anything. And he's always like kind of berating Naruto on how to like do teamwork and how he's not always that good and all that. And I, I, I just like seeing Naruto and Neji like bicker. It's strange because I mean, we've seen Neji and Naruto in Team Dynamics, but I've never really seen them like at each other's throats. In this film, they're really at each other's throats in parts, you know, where they don't agree with stuff and where like certain things happened, where they get pissed off with one another. And their like kind of like relationship in the movie is very like kind of, it's a little different to the TV show because in the TV show, obviously Naruto and Neji had that kind of like tension in the tuning exams, but after that, they kind of saw even ground and you know but in this film they're very kind of at each other's throats at times you know and I suppose they've always been like that but in this film it's kind of escalated and obviously Rock Lee's in this film, Sakura, we get to see a bit of Tsunade and Shizune, Shizune and a bit of Kakashi and Mike Guy and it's, it's a pleasure to see them but obviously the main main character of the film is this girl called um what's her name the pretest girl um I forgot her name. I've just called her the pretest. And basically she's the pretest and basically the people just want her because um she has this like blood power thing that can revive and as well as that she also can predict the future as well. And because of that, she also kinda has a similar like backstory towards Naruto. Obviously Naruto just sees her at first as this kind of selfish and princess and 
she is kind of selfish. Like, she doesn't seem to really accept or acknowledge people who help her. There are people who risk their lives for her, who die for her, and she doesn't even give a crap about it. And this pisses off Naruto to a point where he's about to freaking punch her. And um, yeah, obviously when he learns her backstory and how people didn't really accept her because she can predict people's deaths and people were afraid of her and they hated her just like how Naruto was hated by his village because he had the nine tail fox he started to relate and their character development does kind of escalate to the point where it becomes something a bit more than just friends but I'll leave that to the imagination and there's a particular scene towards the end where it's like ooh ooh could something happen but I'll let you watch that and as I said the animation is much better in this film um, some of like the genjutsu and um, ninjutsu techniques and taijutsu are really done really well. I especially loved Rock Lee's fight with one of the bad guys, um, his like taijutsu skills and just the way they animated him. It was just very fast paced and it was very reminiscent of his battle in the um, tune exam. It literally took me back to that time and obviously he has some flashbacks of him and Guy Sensei and oh it was so funny and I freaking love Guy Sensei's voice it's just so cool and all that um honestly um the characters are all just really cool and really great and just I, I like them I actually do like the main girl character as well she does have an interesting like backstory as I said and yeah um it is interesting um it does go in a direction I wasn't really expecting it to go but at the same time I kind of predicted it at the same time and obviously that is a mixed aspect of the film it is kind of predictable at times and obviously I haven't talked about the villain in my positive aspects and that's the reason he, he's not positive for me I mean this guy is kind of a bore to be honest with you um he just wants to like what revive this demon thing because he wants to rule the world I mean really really uh, okay um, so he came from a long line of followers of Maru who had spent generations perfecting a dark form of medical ninjutsu and I will give him um, praise for this he uses this sort of dark chakra to enhance the chakra of anyone he wishes and um, with ease and he kind of like alters their appearances and it looks kind of creepy I, I will give it that it does look pretty interesting and uh, his story is a bit weird I mean at the beginning of the film he gave his men the gang of four special chakra enhancement by infusing them with dark chakras thus giving them access to techniques that could not normally be possible and um, Yumi then entered the Myra spirit cage and freed him and he basically put the spirit inside of his body um, and making him a container and stuff happens um, towards the end and I won't spoil too much but it's like <laughs> I don't know I don't really get the reason why he's doing this it's like he, he's just doing this because what he wants to rule the world I mean, is that it? I mean, it's a very, he's a very kind of cardboard cutout. He's a very standard, typical Shonen Jump villain. He, I mean, he's just evil and that's it. Uh, honestly, uh, I don't know. And this film, that's the problem. It is another kind of typical Naruto film. I will say it is much better um, compared to the um, second one. Um, and don't think it has that level of fun the third one had. It's not as fun. I mean, the jokes don't always land. Maybe because I watched it in English and I don't think the dubbing is that done well. Um, but honestly, yeah, it is what it is. Um, with that, honestly, Naruto does have the most time to shine, you know. He's like, you know the way he is with the pretest, like not liking her attitude and all that and um, it makes sense because it just triggers um, feelings when he was younger and honestly I definitely you know I you know yeah it is what it is um with that said I'm gonna give this film uh 
6 out of 10, and I'm gonna give it a C. Um, yeah, I mean, it's not really a film I would remember, and it hasn't, doesn't really stand out. It honestly just feels like, the, I would say this, I like the fact that they introduced the villain at the beginning of the film. That way we established who the villain was and what he wanted to do. That made sense. But then, but then like the middle, like kind of uh, end of the first act towards the second act, it kind of felt like your typical Naruto canon like filler arc. It didn't feel that unique and it kind of felt stale and the plot was just honestly like another episode of Naruto in a way. It was kind of a bore. It was a bore, I have to admit. But yeah, um, this film was obviously set sometime after um, the Sasuke, like, at, not, was it the Sasuke arc or was it before it? I have no idea. Might have just, just been before, just after they got saved Gara and before the Sasuke bit. But yeah, it is what it is. But yeah, go watch this film if you want to, but I, eh, I'd give it a skip. But it's nice to see Naruto and the gang in action. As I said, I haven't seen um, any of the Naruto characters like doing their thing in a long time. And it's nice to come back and see them in action, you know. I do miss how the show was and how Boruto just completely ruined it, you know. But yeah, thank you for watching the interview. Please like and share this video. Comment down below and tell me what's your favourite Naruto movie. With that said, thank you for watching. Boyd is signing out.